Kia ora koutou. welcome to Lincoln. This is Ron Pello. We're here at Lincoln University and Ron is the Executive Director of CIDIC. So Ron, do you want to tell us what CIDIC's all about? Absolutely. CIDIC is a partnership between seven organisations that work together, network to advance South Island Deering. And across that partnership we've got Lincoln University, um, very obvious what they are, a land-based university, Dairy NZ, a research uh, funded uh, organisation funded by all dairy farms to advance Deering in New Zealand. We've got Ravensdown, a fertiliser cooperative, LIC, an animal genetics co-op, mm. and then the two major COIs in the agriculture industry, uh, Planted Food Research and Agriculture Ag Research. And then we have SIDE, SIDE's a network of farmers, and so that rounds out the partnership in CIDIC as being people very focused on advancing South Island Deering and working together because they've got complementary strengths and skills. And if we work together through CIDIC, work together, we can advance the cause much better than anyone on their own. Nice, nice. Hey, well, it's a good-looking farm you got here. Uh, so, what's what's the purpose of this of this farm? What do you what do you so set up to do? We're, we're here on Lincoln University Dairy Farm. It's a commercial demonstration farm, and it's a clear differentiation between it running as a research farm, which is what we typically think of in university farms, yeah, yeah. and a demonstration farm, which is all about being commercial, being set up similarly to every other dairy farm in terms of resources and uh, methods yeah. and uh, all those other kinds of things, but showcasing what can achieve if we apply the best products, the best services, the best research in a full commercial dairy farm. Yeah. And so we operate in the top 2 to 3% of profitability across Canterbury. We benchmark against other farms so we know we're in that, in that region. And that gives other farmers a really good reason to come along and see what we're doing. We can tag some other things along side of that, but we've got to be profitable for farmers to get excited about coming and seeing what we're doing. Okay. Then we've got some messages that they can ideally understand the principles of what we do here, go home and apply them on their own farms. So you got a lot of eyes watching we do. you. We do. We <laughs> How does that feel? <laughs> ah, well, you grow used to it. You grow used to it. Nice. Uh, we, we have about a thousand people a month looking at our website in terms of farm walk notes. There's about a similar number on Facebook watching us on a weekly basis. And then we get about three and a half thousand visitors on this farm every year coming to see what happens here. Challenge us. Uh, Tell us when we got it wrong. <laughs> Tell us when they think we're going to get it wrong. Wow. But also follow us and see how it's worked and largely see what we're doing, understand it on their own farm and go back and get the same benefit on their own farm. It's like, a, it's so like a rural uh, reality TV show, isn't absolutely, it? Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> You're living your life in public. <laughs> we are. It's a little bit of goldfish, which is a, a, a challenge for us sometimes. <clears throat> but at the end of the day, we have to be transparent. We have to uh, have to put out our case in terms of how we uh, endeavour and plan to operate with what's in front of us. Uh, we do our best uh, analysis of what we think the opportunities are show that to, to, to our peers around us and then get on and make it happen. And if we get it right, we see the results. If we don't get it right, we learn from them, but we're transparent and we, we showcase that to people all the way. And largely we've been successful more times than not, which is good, uh, but there's always some things that, with hindsight, it's really easy to see what you could have done. But this is about showing, apply the basic principles all the time and we get it right. And that's largely our success is we apply basic pasture management, animal husbandry, farm system principles on a really timely basis and that's often the difference between our profitability and the average profitability. It's that two week period between when a decision has been made or should have been made. And nice. so largely what we think that we're doing that's different that achieves our profitability is good farm management applied timely. Nice. And so tell us about what you've, the experiment you've been running the past few years. Not sure I like the word experiment because that suggests <laughs> research and, and uh, replication and a whole lot of detail that we simply can't do. Fair point. But nevertheless, what we've endeavoured to do on this farm for a number of years is run this farm to maximise sustainable profit. That's our objective. That's probably a common objective you hear applied to a lot of businesses. Yeah. We put some caveats around that. We need to do that within our historical environmental footprint which in itself is a big topic and, uh, and, and an interesting discussion on its own. We want to do the, the most profitability that we can achieve off this farm with the least impact on the environment. We want to do it through productivity, so we want to maximise efficiency of it. And we want to make sure that we remain relevant to our peers around us to make sure the things we're doing, they can do as well. But we also added into that objective that we'll take some risk to try some things that may not work to find the things that really will work. Mm -hmm. And that's been really important in terms of how we've achieved what we have in the last few years. So, some of the things we've done here three years, five years ago, 
we realise that we sit on a very productive piece of soil. We generally get good sunshine, we have good irrigation, we've got fertile soils because we've been able to address that and bring up the level of fertility. We've got good pastures and so we can grow a lot of grass. If we can turn that grass into milk really efficiently, we're in a very productive site and we felt we had an opportunity that we should utilise that. We were mitigating our nutrient losses at the time with some products that are not currently available on the market and so that had put us in a position of very high productivity, very profitable with a low nitrogen loss. So that was DCDs? That was DCD, ECO-N. Yeah. It was a yeah. fantastic, uh, uh, fantastic piece of re research carried out by Lincoln University staff to find ways of addressing ultimately the urinary end uh, impact of grazing pasture in New Zealand. And it's not a dairy uh, scenario, it's a grazed pasture scenario. Yeah. Our, our nutrient losses are largely because we graze animals outdoor all year. And it's a, it's a fabulous part of how we farm in New Zealand, but it's also, it's a biological system and, and the system is a little bit leaky and that's one of the things that leaks. Mm. And so, of course, the DCDs got you know, taken off the table off the as market. an option? Yep. yep. Yeah. So we said, well, uh, we had a very quick conversation, should we change our objective so that we could keep farming the way we were? And we said, no, we've, we've got to still try and farm to that historical uh, nutrient loss that we were achieving with DCD, but we've got to do, run the farm differently so that we don't, uh, we don't have a bigger loss than, than what we will in the absence of DCD. So we initially cut back uh, nitrogen fertiliser inputs and tried to just uh, really optimise the system with the level of uh, system that we were running. Uh, we just couldn't do that. We brought in a lot of feed to replace the grass that we should have grown, could have grown with fertiliser and DCD to mitigate. And so middle of uh, the 13-14 season we were facing a forecast significantly higher nutrient loss than we had in the past. We made a decision, we said we can't we can't have that outcome at the end of the year and so in a very productive and highly profitable uh, dairy season, the 13-14 season, one of the yeah. best payouts ever, yeah. we constrained our production to meet our nutrient loss. It cost over $200,000 in gross income, less costs about $84,000 we couldn't give back to the university uh, as their return for this farm last season but we did achieve what we wanted to for them in terms of nutrient loss. Any sleepless nights? Uh, it's no point having a sleepless night because you're not productive the next day <laughs> but it wasn't a happy place to be in. Yeah. You know, it was, a, it was a sad way for us to end the season uh, given what we could have achieved and uh, you know, eighty-four thousand dollars for one farm is is a significant cost. Eighty-four thousand dollars per farm, or uh, 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 scaled up, given a lot of farms are a little bit bigger than this, uh, is a big cost to New Zealand. It's uh, income that never came into New Zealand. Yeah. But really importantly, we didn't want to rest on on that outcome. We said, how do we get back to the level of profitability, productivity, and nutrient loss that we've achieved in the past? And so we set about uh, to run this year differently to try and get back to where we want to be. So what did you do this year? So this year we, we really came down to two choices. We could either uh, invest a whole lot of capital to take our grazing animals off pasture at critical times of the year. Now that is one uh, opportunity, reducing urinary end losses. So building barns. Building so, barns or, yeah. uh, or at least a, a concrete feed pad or some form of covered <laughs> facility. But frankly, we'd probably spend about $3 million to do that on wow. this farm. $3 million on a farm that's probably valued about $10 million, so 30% more capital just to deal with that. And of course, once you've invested it, you've got a whole lot of cost to, to go with that. And so if we were going that way, we would have to lift profitability hugely just to be back where we were, because we've got a lot of extra costs. We saw another opportunity, and that was to try and optimise the milk production per animal over its total lifetime, run the least amount of inputs possible, uh, the fewest number of stock possible, and no infrastructure. And right. that's the important bit, no infrastructure yeah. in a pasture-based system. So, so, so no building barns. No barns. Fewer cows out doing wee-wees on the, on the grass. Yep. And, and that means you have to bring in less feed. We, we wanted to have a stocking rate that matched our feed supply that was a feed supply from pasture grown on the farm, not a feed supply of pasture with a whole lot of other feed brought in uh, from elsewhere. 
And what we're really thinking about is actually not just this milking platform, but uh, across the whole catchment that we have an influence on. So we influence the catchment beyond this farm in terms of our, where our young stock graze, uh, where our cows are wintered, and any additional feed that's grown uh, somewhere else and supplied to this farm. And by having the least number of cows possible to maximise milk production and optimise our, our farm system, we have less impact on that wider catchment. And so for this piece of land, we may not make the level of reduction in nitrogen loss that we may be asked to quite soon. But across the catchment, we've had a bigger impact. And so that was mm. uh, an important opportunity for us to explore, which is what we've done this season. Right. And so how's, how's it gone? What about the moolah? What about the dollars? Well, of course, we had a payout drop as well, which has made it even more challenging. Yeah, but yeah. payout always goes up and down. We're part of a farmer co-op. We get that benefit of the high last year, but we have to accept the benefit of the, so the reality of this year's lower payout. If we adjust uh, and standardise payout across years, what we're trying to do is to hold a level of profitability that is, is, uh, is substantial year in, year out have a resilient business and, and have a, a small impact on the wider uh, environment. And so what we've seen so far this year uh, is a dry season relative to normal. That's allowed good utilisation of pasture. We probably haven't grown quite as much pasture on a year by year basis, um, but we've utilised it really well. And with the system that we've chosen to run and the number of stock and the amount of inputs, for a long time, really from carving through until Christmas time, we were producing more milk this year in total from less inputs. So that's great, that's efficiency, that's yeah. what we want. Yeah. It, was, it was in effect costing us a little less to produce the same amount. And right, so your, your costs go down and your revenue is, is holding. Same. Yeah, it's holding. Yeah. So that's good. Um, and we were doing it with fewer total animals, so that meant fewer total animals across their lifetime across the catchment. From Christmas time on, we haven't achieved the level of production per cow that we wanted to. We're not far off our target, but every little bit is really, really critical. And in this year's payout, if we're 5% off our production target, we're 15% off our profit objective and that starts to really hurt. So we think at the moment, it's, uh, it's a couple of months until we hope the season ends, but we expect to be somewhere probably in the five to 10% margin below where we ideally would have been. But we have identified some things that we think we could do better next year, uh, which still gives us hope that there is a viable option uh, in an optimized nil infrastructure, lower a uh, number of cows doing higher production per hectare, per cow, um, but there's a lot still to learn in that space.